All right, we got Coach Lubick here, and we'll get started. Um, let's start with um, Brian Christofferson, 24-7 Sports. Hey, uh, Coach, Brian. I'm going to actually ask you about someone who's uh, not playing. Uh, Will Nixon, um, what, what's he been doing behind the scenes? Has he kind of been in your meetings and stuff? Uh, how has he been engaged? Yeah, I'm glad you asked about him. He's doing awesome. Uh, you know, it's disappointing when we lost him very early on in the summer as soon as he got up here because he showed a great promise. He was a guy that we definitely thought would have contributed this year. But uh, to his credit, battling through his knee injury, he's doing everything he possibly can uh, ahead of schedule, shows up for every meeting, um, knows the positions from a, a video skill or just being able to explain it inside and out without actually repping it. So I, I could not be more impressed with his progress and what he's done and we expect to have him full go uh, next year. Obviously, you just lost uh, a young guy from your room. What's your message as a coach to those guys? You know, it, it's been a difficult year, and maybe some get impatient or whatever. What, what, what do you tell them as they're going through this? Sure. You know, it, uh, it, it, to be honest, it doesn't really affect our room. Um, uh, it's – the guys that are here, we're going to coach the guys that are here and, and push them to be the best they can possibly be. And I think our players understand that. I think we have a lot of uh, friendly competition that's making each other better. We have some young guys that are getting better. We have some experienced guys that are improving. And so it's, you know, it's, it's a daily process that, you know, that sometimes guys get nicked up or for whatever reason might not be out there. The guys that are out there is, are the guys that we're going to coach and, and get better. And, and you never know when your opportunity is going to come. So sometimes whether it's an injury or, or, or whatever the scenario is, you got to be ready for it. And the way you get ready for it is by preparing and practicing hard every day. Thank you. Thank you. Sam McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Another receiver question. Hey, when the light go on for Xavier Betts, I know he started on, on Saturday against Iowa yeah. Friday. And uh, he's he's been playing more and more, and you guys also seem to have kind of a role for him in that jet sweep. But when did the light go on for him, and 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 why do you think it went on um, so that he could keep playing more and more? Sure, I'm very proud of where where he's came from. Uh, it's it's hard for any freshman to come in and make an instant impact. It takes time, and so I don't know if it was like an instant light. I think it was more of uh, you know just gradually getting better. I do think you know when he got we got into some game action and got some confidence and had a little success in the Penn State game. I think that gave him more confidence um, and just knowing what it takes to play at this level, the speed of the game. And he's, and he's continuing to get better. He gets better every day in practice and very proud of, of where he's going. And he's a special talent that's going to be a great player here. How would you describe his personality? Uh, fun loving, easy, easy to coach. Uh, he just likes to come out and work. You know, he, uh, he responds well to, to coaching. Um, he, he wants to get better. Uh, listens and and he's competitive you know he's a, he's a competitive kid that if he does something wrong it really bothers him and that, that's a big big thing that we look for as coaches because he's never satisfied and he always wants to get better thank you evan bland omaha world herald hey matt just curious uh how you would size up the the running back room right now um you know how much of, of what do you see them do in practice how much of that translates into a game and, and maybe what's the challenge of rotating so many young backs into the game the way you guys have. Yeah, well, we, we definitely want to keep rotating backs because I think that keeps guys fresh. Um, it's, a, it's a tribute to our running back room that we have some capable guys that can all go in there and play. It's one of the positions that takes the most pounding. So, you know, one time or another, I think they've all been nicked up with something. And so you've got to play a lot of guys. I think the way we uh, schedule practice reps, we let all those guys take reps. And, you know, our job as coaches is to keep it simple enough for those guys so they can all take reps and go in there and compete. And we, we feel good about that. You know, it's, it's one of those positions that we're still trying to get completely healthy. Um, but the guys that have played have done a good job for us. Kevin Suits, KOLN. Coach, on that topic, is it fair to say that Wondell Robinson is considered a running back right now? I know you've played him there uh, quite a bit just uh, based out of need with some of the injuries you've been dealing with. And uh, yeah. how do you feel like he's held up uh, with the increased workload the last couple of weeks? He's done great. You know, we, Wondell, the biggest thing, this is early on when we had some injuries running back, came up and says, Coach, I want to do whatever I can to help the football team win, which means some, you know, some snaps running back, snaps a wide out. Um, you know, I wouldn't consider him a running back, even though he can do that. I consider him just a really good player that we can do a lot of things with. 
whether it's out of the backfield, whether it's, you know, he can line up and play both positions on the outside and slot. And, uh, you know, it's had equal reps doing that. Um, just really tribute to him the fact that he can also go in at running back and, and pick up protections. Uh, you know, definitely he can, he's very good at running all the, all the running back routes. So we've been really pleased. It, it helps us as an offense to have a guy that that's that versatile. Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, Coach. Um, how do you go about just managing the right feel with that um, Luke and Adrian situation when you make that decision to put Luke in the game? Is it a lot of it predetermined, or is it a game feel when you make that call to make the, that switch in a game? Uh, good question. It's a combination of both, because we told those guys that we expect both of them to play in the game this past game, which they did. And uh, But we also said, hey, a lot of it's going to be the flow of the game. You know, it's going to be if if one guy is doing really well and we're moving the ball, we don't want to take away the rhythm, but but expect both guys to play, and they both responded well. You know, when Luke came off the bench, drove us right down the field, was ready to play. Um, same thing that when Adrian went back in, you know, he responded well. And, uh, you know, and Adrian, going back and watching the film, played played really well. So, you know, it's it takes special guys to kind of handle that. Um, and we do, we kind of treat it like every other position where we rotate different guys, you know, it, when you're not in, you better be ready to go. And, and to be ready to go, you got to kind of be focused and playing the game in your mind. So when you get that snap, you're ready. Um, so it's actually been really smooth, to be honest with you. They both are a little bit different, uh, similar and different. They both can run, as you've seen, and they both can throw it. Um, some might run one play a little better than another, you know. And so that's as, us as coaches is to get those called when, when they're the specific quarterback. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a really good situation, to be honest with you. Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Hey Matt, you've got some some big plays in the passing game from from Austin Allen, and so I'm curious what you've seen from him, just as a a big target and a guy that can make plays. And then also, he had that sort of that scary moment late in the game. Did he come out of that okay? Yeah, he's good to go. He had a great practice today. Uh, you know, and, and the reason that he makes big plays in in the game is because he makes them in practice, and and it carries over. Uh, you know. His work ethic is among the top of our team, if not the top. He, he practices to win every day, and it shows in games. He, he's a tremendous talent. He's got great size with good ball skills. He can run all the receiver routes. Uh, I know quarterbacks like throwing to him because he has a big catch radius. And so I, I, I see him you know, continuing to make plays, and he's, he's been a big, uh, a big spark for our offense. A couple more quick ones here for Coach Lubick. Uh, Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Matt, uh, another quarterback question. Um, as you mentioned, obviously, obviously those guys have their individual strengths while running the same offense. Do, do, do you, as an offensive coach and somebody involved in the game plan, have to step out of your comfort zone at all when you're designing um, a system that's going to work for both of them to go in and you may not know, you know exactly what series or what play uh, you're going to use one guy versus the other? No, and that's that's actually a good thing because we feel that both they both can run every play in our offense. Um, they both can run, you know, the quick passing game, the down the field passing game, uh, the run game. Um, now there might be some specific plays that one guy might do better than another when that guy's in there that you might want to call that play. But but that's really helped us because so we don't have to have a separate package for each quarterback. Um, that's that's helped us a lot. So if one guy. Get, does get hurt, for example, or gets nicked up or needs a blow, the other guy can go in and you can run your full package. Is it is it more of a challenge to switch during a series than it is to kind of go two series and then two series with one guy like you did at the start of the game? Yeah, I, I think it's easier to come in because um, you just come in to come in between a series, not in the middle of a series, but the start of a series because you know what you're expecting a little bit. You know, as coaches, we kind of talk about, hey, expect this play, expect this play. So the quarterback who's got to make all the decisions can kind of, you know, play the series out in his mind as opposed to just getting thrown out there in the middle of a series, which I don't think we've done that. But that's a little harder, obviously, because it's, it's hard for any player because you just got to, you know, you got to all of a sudden, you know, reset your focus and be ready to play. Um, but that, so, we, yeah, to answer your question, we always try if when we are going to make a substitution at quarterback, to make sure, hey, this is what you're going to expect this next series. And we do that even if the quarterback is still in there and he's the same guy going in with the next series. Hey, this is what to expect. This is what we're going to do and talk it out so they go out there with a little bit of an advantage and some confidence. Back to Sam McEwen. 
I don't know if you've ever faced Bob Diaco in your career, but what, what, what are the hallmarks of a Bob Diaco defense? What do they like to do? Nebraska fans are somewhat familiar with it, <laughs> but uh, what, what yeah. would you say about it? Uh, you know, I know he's had a lot of success in his career. They, they do a good job. They've been definitely improved from last year statistically. Um, they, they take pride in not giving up big plays. I think that's a big improvement just from last year statistically to this year. And uh, so he, he, he does things. Um, he gives you different looks, but he, he keeps those looks sound where they're not going to give up big plays. So, you know, like every team in this league, it's going to be a big challenge for us uh, because it's a good defensive football team that's well coached. They, they have given up, I think, about eight yards per attempt in passing. So there, is, there has been a couple of creases there. Do you, how do you feel about your downfield passing game right now? How much better did it get in the last week? Uh, well, we thought we improved this last weekend. You know, I think at one time, Adrian was, you guys know the stats better than me, it was like 14 of 16 and did a good job of throwing, uh, you know, catchable balls. Guys were doing a good job getting open. That, that's not just Adrian, that's protection. It all, it all works together. And the more you can run the ball, it helps you throw the ball. Uh, so, you know, we, we always want to be balanced. You know, we feel like we can throw the ball downfield. We think we can get it out fast and quick game. Um, but we also want to be able to run the ball. So I, I do think we made some steps in the passing game this last weekend, and we got to continue to improve there. And finishing up with uh, Steve Sippel, uh, Lincoln Journal Star. Can you say, uh, Matt, if that quarterback situation will look the same? I mean, is it is does the plan kind of stay static this week? I could say, but I I don't want to say to be honest with you. It, it's uh, they, they we like I said, like you saw the game Saturday. We feel like they both can play. Um, and we thought they both did a good job when they were in there. Like every position, there's, there's things that you wish you had back or you could have done better as, as coaches, especially. There's always things that, you know, you look at yourself and how can we continue our constant state of improvement of just getting better. But uh, now I, I, I think they both, you know, I would expect them both to play. Um, how we use them and the exact reps, I know that, that you, you guys will see that on the field on Saturday. Thank you very much, Coach. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. All right, thank you, Coach Lubick. Uh, we'll have Coach Shenander here in just, just a second.